We now come to the ninth station of the cross, where Jesus is given the cross and forced to carry it after all of the amount of loss of blood, the fact that he hasn't slept in well over 24 hours, he hasn't had anything to drink, with the dehydration, with the lack of sleep, and with the loss of blood, Jesus is now in a very weakened state. And finally, the Bible tells us in John 19 that after the soldiers had made fun of Jesus and and had scourged him and had spit on him and had, had you know, beaten him and made fun of him and pushed a crown of thorns into his skull, it says, finally, Pilate handed him over to uh, them to be crucified. And the Bible tells us in John uh, 19, 16 and 17, so the soldiers took charge of Jesus and carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. This journey that Jesus took carrying the cross is called the Via Dolorosa where every step of that journey was met with pain, was met with drops of blood. And I'm sure that Jesus left blood all the way to the cross on that journey. Look at this picture and think about how heavy that cross must have been to Jesus. Not simply the physical weight. Of course, it was heavy and he was in a weakened state. But that cross represented the death and execution of Jesus Christ, who had never sinned for our sins. And he was carrying not just the cross, but he was carrying your sins and mine. You know, before Jesus did that, he said this, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross and you must follow me. Now today, we don't understand the full depth of the meaning of that phrase, take up your cross and follow me. Because for us today, the cross is a symbol of hope. 2,000 years later, we put crosses on hospitals. We put them in cemeteries to honor the dead. We put them on church steeples. We wear crosses around our neck. Today, the cross is the greatest symbol of hope. But in those days, nobody took up a cross unless the Romans were going to nail them to it. It was a symbol of death. It was a symbol of execution. It wasn't just a symbol of death. It was a symbol of a criminal's death. It was the worst form. The Romans had thought up the most humiliating form of of uh, execution for the criminals. To wear a cross around your neck in Jesus' day would be the equivalent of you wearing a, a symbol of an electric chair around your neck. It was a symbol of torture, a symbol of death, and a symbol of humiliation. When Jesus says, I want you to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me, he's saying, I want you to be willing to come and die because it is in dying that we find true life. When we die to ourselves, then we know how to really live. Pray with me. Father, as we think about how heavy that cross must have been for Jesus and how our Lord told us to take up our own cross in following him, I thank you, Lord, that you always tell the truth, that you don't weaken or water down the commitment that's required to follow you. Following Christ is often difficult because it's the exact opposite of the way the world lives. But help me to remember when I'm carrying my cross that I'm not doing this alone. That you, Jesus, did it before me and now you do it with me. And Holy Spirit, you do it in me, and you do it through me. I thank you that I don't have to carry my cross by myself, but that Jesus Christ in me is the hope of glory. 
Amen.